Hello everybody, we are in the midst of a new of a raging war in Ukraine. The Russian troops have been pounding the cities of Ukraine. The attacks are aimed at tripling it as an independently functioning nation. Students from India, most of them are medicals stranded there and they are crying for their rescue from the war-torn territories. The in Union Government of India has been taking efforts towards bringing them back home. Some state governments too have been coordinating in this rescue emergency efforts and most of them are reported to be returning home. It's a good news. Let us hope the war comes to an end for the good of the humanity as a whole. On pondering over the causes for this disastrous war, Russia and Ukraine both were parts of the erstwhile Soviet Union. We do know that it was a conglomeration of so many ethnic communities with vast linguistic variations. The languages ranged from Baltic, Celtic to Romance and Arabic orientation. The reasons for the conflict could be traced to centuries of simmering Ukraine anger and suppression on suppression of their language and culture. The Tsarist and communist domination and calculated, calculated genocidal attacks on Ukrainian people have all led to this disaster. Russification of all day-to-day -day activities, especially relegation of Ukrainian language and culture were being systematically carried out by the Russians. After the death of Lenin, Stalin's Soviet Union unleashed terror on Ukrainian people. They had to endure starvation and death. Under such circumstances, the collapse and dissolution, dissolution of Soviet Union had happened in the early 1990s. Communism couldn't hold the big number of nationalities together anymore. Like religion, the political ideology of communism too could not bind pe different peoples who spoke different languages for long. Throughout the world, the modern nation states have been formed on linguistic basis, and language proves to be the major identity for nationhood for a vast majority of the nations around the globe. Other criterions such as religion and race too do not appear to unite people as much as the language does. Most of the modern nation states in different continents have been formed on linguistic grounds. For instance, in Europe almost the entire population belongs to white Caucasoid race anthropologically and Christian by religion notwithstanding the divisions within. There are a number of nations with the predominant Christian denominations such as Protestantism as religion such as Britain, Germany, Sweden, Finland, Norway, etc. These are different nations formed on the basis of languages predominantly spoken there like English, German, Swedish, Finnish, Norwegian, etc. And the nations with the majority Catholic populations, Catholic Christian populations such as France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, etc. have different languages spoken there such as French, Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Of course, there are exceptions, like the small nations like Belgium and Switzerland. But the once colonized territories like Africa and South America and Australia do differ according to the colonizers' languages. Those now independent nations have their native languages, but struggle with the languages of colonizers like English, French, etc. That is mostly because of the death of their own scripts and underdevelopment of those native languages. Similarly, there are different sovereign nation states with predominant Muslim populations or in the Middle East. In Oriental countries such as massive China, Japan, Korea, Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, Myanmar and Malaysia, all, the, all are independent nations. This is despite the respective populations being anthropologically belonging to the same race of Mongolian stock and the religions such as Buddhism, Islam, etc. are predominant there. <clears throat> Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, Indonesian, Vietnamese, Burmese, Malay are some of the languages in these nations. Religions like Christianity, Islam, Islam, Buddhism, etc. are not the determinant factors for nationhood in all these nations discussed above. The separation of Bangladesh from Pakistan is a classic example. Bengali-speaking Muslims could not remain with Punjabi, Sindhi and Urdu-speaking Muslims of Pakistan. So language happens to be the determinant factor for nationality in all these nations.
in this background something that that is so unique and remarkable about our nation state india struck in my mind immediately those leaders who guided the creation of the constitution of india post colonial regime were really visionaries for excellence for they gave paramount importance to federal structure of the nascent country india at that time the that division of states and its governments based on languages was the master stroke by those masters this assumes great significance considering the vast distinctness of the language between one that is spoken in the northern end and that of the southern tip and eastern border to western border of the country exclusive powers to the states in governance guaranteed in the constitution has been able to counter major ethnic divisions of all sorts and that hurdles that stood in the unity of india but now attempts are made to jeopardize this wonderful arrangement in the name of uniformity and absurd slogans like one religion one language one type of food etc or, or um, bending and break appear to be breaking the beautiful fabric of unity and diversity and they these are that, that india appears to stand threatened and we should not allow these forces to succeed in their attempts of destruction and strive to ensure the further strengthening of the principle of federalism of a nation as guaranteed in the constitution thank you we'll meet in another video